Hey, good morning. My name's Brett. Hey, I'm Lisa. It's been brought to our attention from some new subscribers and or just new people that are watching that they wanted a little more information on kind of what we do here on the ranch. So that's what we're going to give you, just a real brief snippet. We have a commercial cow operation where we raise the calves and sell them as calves or we keep them through yearlings and sell them as year yearlings. We also have a commercial goat operation where we basically kind of do the same thing. We try to raise all of those things in sync with nature, which means chemical free, um, input free. We do that because we think it's healthier and we're consuming it along with people that end up buying it in the stores. And we don't direct market or anything, but our meat does eventually end up in a store somewhere. So we try to do everything we can to make it like we would want to eat it. They also help pay the bills which is very important if you want to stay in business. One other thing we like to do a lot of is hunting and fishing. We do have fun. We also garden, I greenhouse, I can, I grow as much of our own food as I can for our family. I'm Brett's heavy equipment operator. I'm the resident painter, landscaper. They said they wanted a brief description, <laughs> Lisa, of the ranch. Basically, she's known as world's greatest. If you need it done, you call World's Greatest because she can do it all. I'm the general purpose help. I'm his best help because I'm all he's got. <laughs> thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing if you subscribed. We really appreciate that. It helps us a lot. We're moving the cows. Here comes the growler. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Today we've got to do a bunch of little kind of piddly things probably. Uh, we got to kind of get ready. I, I, I picked up some more cattle over on the other side of the river. And so they've got, I think, four maybe big bull calves. I got to get them off. I just need to get them out of there because I don't want them uh, breeding once the cows start calving. So we've got to bring them back in. That's why the cows are right here. This is kind of what they, we stage them in. It runs down the creek, down to that end. And so uh, I've got to set up to try to bring them back in again and, and just to get four bulls off. We got to do our normal chores, you know, get the, get the dogs fed, you know, check on the goats, make sure everybody's doing well. And then my heifers that I put out, I did not teach them to take pressure uh, the way I normally like to do. And I turned these out after, we, after Shane and Donnie and I got done working them and they blew through fences all the way down to the goats. So uh, just now kind of got them uh, settled down where they're, they're slowed down and they're taking pressure and it's not a big deal, but I gotta go back and fix some barbed wire fence. A lady by the name of Don Notto is who kind of showed us how to teach them real easy how to take pressure. So this is a little tip. Don was a kind of a protege of Bud Williams. And so she, she was around him a lot and got to, got to learn a lot from him. And one of the best ways to teach them to take pressure, I mean, there's several ways you can do it, but one of the easiest, best ways that she told us about, and it works great, is to just go ahead and open up your chute and put them through the chute. And everybody immediately says, oh, God, man, why would I, why would I go to the trouble to run the cattle through the chute? I mean, that's a, that's a hectic jog that I, job that I usually get four or five people in here to help do. And really, it's, it's not that big a deal. Uh, you've already got them probably in the pens because you just sorted them off the cows. Just go ahead and open up your, your alley and your chute and your load up box and all that. And just, you can do it by yourself. Just sit back there and just walk back and forth, rock back and forth, whatever to kind of keep them moving 
that direction and they'll just go through the chute and they feel that pressure because everything's getting tied on them and then when they come out the end it releases the pressure so it teaches them that yeah they're going to get some pressure but you're going to let it off and so it's a good thing it, it it helps a lot so if you can run them through two or three times it'll help tremendously when you put them out on grass or somebody else puts them out on grass uh, they will have been taught that you can apply pressure and then but it gets released at some point so just a little tip on that so i gotta get going and get started so i guess it's time to get to work well i had to pick up i picked up a few more cows and they had some big bull calves on them so we're having to bring the whole herd in again which just so happens we're uh in the staging pasture anyway so i got world's greatest cow rustler i guess she's not a rustler uh cow herder <laughs> behind me so this will be a real quick deal we're not going to video a lot just giving you a heads up on what's going on I guess we did an okay job pinning them. We're gonna have to drive them out. Come on. That's something Bud always used to talk about, Bud Williams. He'd say if you pin them right, in other words, uh, the right kind of stress, uh, you wouldn't even have to close the gate. Well, I'm not there. When you first put them in, buddy, I'm closing the gate. But they are satisfied now. Now they've been in here for a little bit. These lockjaw clips, I went down this fence and there was, I don't remember how many, a bunch of them, deer have knocked off. So I'm coming back and replacing them with my uh, Ken Cove wraparound clips. And they are working much better for deer than the lockjaw. There we go. There's a big old rattlesnake that lives right in here. You see her, you know, at least once a year right in through here. She's not aggressive. Doesn't seem to be until you step on her. So I need to get a little bit of wire here, but I'm just a little bit nervous. Not too bad. I just need a little tiny bit here. It looks clear. Oh, oh. Oh, come on, baby. Really? There we go. All right, no bites.
go. Good as new. What's up? Come on, wait. Well, I was checking to see if I could find the two babies we let out. Floppy. There's Floppy Joe. And then I see Rocky over here. What do you say, Rocky? What do you say, boy? 